All right. Come on up. Uh, I don't think it switched to the right uh, screen, but in the meantime, um, <clears throat> we're going to have our next presenter is uh, Jacob Rockowitz. He's going to be presenting on YAML, what is it good for, part three. Um, Jacob is a consultant who's been working at MSKCC um, for the past, wow, for 15 years at MSKCC. Wow. Um, He's been working with Drupal for seven years and with the help of phase two has pushed MSK to become uh, one of the earliest adopters of Drupal 8. Um, so here we go. Jacob, take it away. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got to point it up. I need a screen. Okay. Um, it's part three because I could do a much longer presentation. Yeah, that would be works as long as this won't squeak you can take this guy away yeah that works I'm just gonna head out there for the newbie buff okay um, part three because I could do a much longer presentation about YAML and I have all this other uh, we did a huge project um, I'm gonna start the presentation and show you name shake did a huge project with some Kettering we ported them to um, Drupal 8 they were an early adopter uh, Drupal 8 was very challenging to learn, but I, I think it's an amazing platform. And just to give you the most important detail about that project is it started on Alpha 3. So we did, ev we built everything from scratch. There were no contrib modules available. Um, it worked out fine because of the APIs in 8, you were able to kind of do creative solutions to problems. And I'm going to get to some of those. Um, so this is, this quote came up, Daredevil series was on Netflix and I, this quote sat with me because I'll just read it. Uh, problems are just opportunities that haven't presented themselves. And I felt like that, I kept running into that while doing this project, being like, uh, we don't have a module. What are we going to, you know, there's, there's no module for this. What are we going to do? How are we going to solve it? And YAML kept coming up. I kept using it to solve different problems. I'm going to get to a big problem in a little bit. Um, I'm going to start off with just what is YAML, because I think some, it's, it's a new piece of technology that's in Drupal 8. It's, they say YAML ain't, ain't another markup language, or that's the way they're presenting. It is a markup language. It's a very simple markup language. It's just plain text. Um, I think the concept behind it, and I haven't read too much on the origins, it's just like XML and just own, it's just hard to read. You can't quickly edit them. And one of the requirements in Drupal 8, they wanted to make config easy to edit. And it's a very readable format. On the right in the yellow is my personal information written out in YAML, and it's just name value pairs. The dash represents an array. Um, and I'll move ahead a little bit. How do you learn YAML? So I presented YAML as a user interface. I created config files and I gave them to editors and I said, you've got to go edit this file. And what I directed them to was Wikipedia. It has one page that describes the whole spec and is incredibly readable. And within about an hour, most, most reasonably intelligent people go, oh yeah, I get it. And if you have a reasonable YAML validator, it usually spits back errors with line numbers because it's actually easy to parse this and be like, you're missing a space here. Um, so where is YAML used in Drupal 8? The most immediate thing that any module, any module developer or any developer would see is in the module info file. And I'm just using this as an example of the starting point of where it's in, in D8. It's used anywhere there's information stored in a file. I can't think of any other instant. Yep, that's it. If you have information written out into a file, it's going to be in YAML in Drupal 8. Um, so I'm going to do a live demo. I'm just kind of preparing people for this. Um, what did I do with YAML um, for M on the MSK project? Um, let's just start with th this concept. YAML is a user interface. Um, UIs tend to be complex. YAML is very simple. It's just plain text. And, and UIs take time to build and maintain, and we had to build a lot of modules, and we had to just get it done. And sometimes it was easier just not to build the UI and just write out a YAML file that makes a lot of sense. Um, and something about YAML, you know, using a YAML as a UI, it kind of brings up this whole concept of configuration files versus GUIs. And it's kind of like the Unix versus Windows thing, where if you know what you're doing, configuration files are really easy. To, you can get things done fast and efficient. And you can even archive it, and you can back it up and share it. With GUI, it can slow you down. Um, important about editing YAML and like the stuff I've done, CodeMirror makes it a lot easier. It's just a, a browser-based text editor. Um, it's being used everywhere. Anywhere you go, like in Bitbucket, and you go to edit a file, It'll open up a code mirror editor. It's kind of like the CK editor equivalent to editing code. Um, I know this concept's kind of like, what, what am I talking about? I'm getting there. Um, so here's the problem that I, we had to face. We needed a form and survey builder for Drupal 8. And the web form module was and is still not available for Drupal 8. There's a lot of stuff going on with it. Um, but it just wasn't there. So MSK needed 
a web form builder. They, that was their requirements. They needed to build forms, collect data, export the data. That's the core of their, like, it was just a key thing. So some concept is form API, that's how forms are built in, in Drupal, is very stable and mature. Actually, in Drupal 8, there were not a lot of changes to form API itself. There was some restructuring of it, but the concept of how it worked, which is render arrays, stayed pretty much the same. And then what a render array, and this is hard to explain these concepts, I just want there's three concepts, form API and render array. Render array is just the way Drupal describes information. It's a way of, it's a PHP array that describes the properties of a form input. I'll show you an example in a second. And then the, the, the fundamental concept that kind of inspired me was, you could take these kind of confusing looking PHP arrays and convert them to YAML and suddenly they become easy to read. And it created this question, could we build forms using YAML? And this, this is what I'm talking about. This is the example. So here's a contact form written in YAML for Drupal 8. This is what you, anyone who, I don't, didn't ask these questions of who's built forms before, but if you built a form in Drupal 8, this is a very simple concept. It's, you're setting your properties. Like the first element is a name. The pound symbol represents, like here's the title of this element, and the type would render a text field. And I'm gonna demo this. Um, so I'm gonna show you what's going on. To start off, it, this is a module called YAML form. It is on D.O. Um, the page has a lot of documentation, and you can spin this up on Simply Test Me very easily and test it. It's self-contained. There's very few dependencies. Um, now I'm going to demo it. Okay, this is the starting page. By the way, this is the high, low. Can I get this resolution sharper? Does anyone know? Yeah, no, as long as it'll support it. Uh, it's 1080p resolution. Okay, let's go for it. The 1080i actually. Much better. I can live with that. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, look at this. Now it's much better. It's a little small, but I don't think that matters that much. And I can actually make this bigger. And we're good to go. Okay, so the module's already installed to kind of speed up the demo. One of the concepts I have compared to other form builders is I'm starting with defaults. I'm starting with kind of three concepts. I'm giving you a contact form to start with, which is what I'm gonna use for a demo, and some examples, which I will show, and then templates. One of the patterns I've seen with form builders is people just copy forms to create other forms, and I'm trying to make this more efficient. Um, I'm gonna just show you the contact form. Here's that YAML, and I'll show you the YAML, rendering a contact form. It actually has some extra properties like a default value and it actually, down here, you're gonna see this pound test, which is a custom thing that I did to make it possible to test forms on the fly, and I'll show you a test to this. So there's a tab called test. It, it's only for developers, but it will just populate the form on the fly so you can quickly test your form and generate some test data. And actually, in the back end, there's ways to generate test data sets that you can use to test incredibly long forms with any data you want. Um, show that it works, I'm gonna hit send. Um, sorry, my clicking is not great. So this is based off of a lot of concepts in web forms. So anyone familiar with web forms is gonna see a lot of similarities. For example, I'm gonna start with results just to show you. This is mirrored off of web forms. I'm collecting the data, I'm presenting it in a table. I can show you the, the data. Um, you can, I also added a plain text view to get people more familiar with that. And there's also YAML view, because the data is being stored in the database as YAML. Um, I just did that because I, I like YAML. It makes things easier. And it actually opens up this possibility that you can filter your, your data really easily. You can do, if I go to the table view, you can search through any piece of data here. So if I type ORA, it's gonna pull up all the submissions by this name. Um, export, it just allows you to export into a spreadsheet. Um, I'm gonna jump back up to the form for a quick second, click edit, and just be like, here's the main page where you can edit it. Um, the settings, everything's customizable. It's kind of one of the, this is a developer tool, so I'm trying to make it as flexible as possible. So every label you can customize, if you go to the admin settings page, you can customize the default of every label. Out of the box, it's including drafts, previews. It, it's up to about 80% feature, 70 to 80% feature parity of what people are familiar with with form builders. Um, one important feature, also it has a full array of access controls, so you can control any aspect of how people access submissions if you want someone. One important thing, I'll make a statement. If you're building these forums, you should be a developer. 
because you have full, it's unlimited capabilities here with these form, this form builder, because you can do anything you can do in a render, right? You can build any layout, anything you want, and I'll sh give you kind of a more concrete example of that. And finally, it does do emails. Um, one interesting thing, D8 has a new plugin system, and it's sending emails, but it's using a plugin. And the idea that behind this plugin is it's an abstract, I'm calling it like a handler, a YAML form handler. And the idea behind this is it takes the data as it comes in, and you can do whatever you want with it. So people can extend this and build plugins to do a um, MailChimp. I'm actually working on creating an interface, like a sender interface, so we could do SMS messaging or anything we want. And you can just stack these handlers into this, into the submission processing. Out of the box, it does store submissions, and you can also turn that off and point this to another service to store your submissions, like a web service or a Google Doc. Um, so it kind of becomes a tool to just manage your forms. It doesn't have to store your data. Um, jumping back up, I just want to show the, the full capability. So it does ship with examples. I'm just going to show you my kitchen sink example. This is an example of every single form element available in core. Um, it gets really interesting when you do this because file uploads are, I actually was able to get file uploads supported and entity references supported out of the box. You get a WYSIWYG getter, you have the table select, and I'm going to just quickly show you the markup for this. Uh, you know, I'm just including references to the documentation, but it gives you good starting points to cut and paste and build your own forms. Um, finally, it does, so YAML forms are entities, and what that does is it opens up where you can embed these on anything on the site. Um, the most common scenario that people talk about is doing a block. And I'm going to just quickly show that demo. Um, sidebar. I'm going to stick to the contact form example. And something I've been playing with is the idea of when you're embedding something, you can set default data. I'm not going to do that right now, but the idea is you could put the form in and change some of the default values. It opens up the capability where you could take the same form and keep reusing it and be like, okay, here's the payment amount for this registration form and here's the payment amount for another. I'm gonna save the block, it's added to the site. And I kinda of wanna show you another key concept and then I'm done. I'm gonna open up two tabs and we're gonna get our contact form on the side and I'm gonna fill it out. Scroll down, I'm gonna send it. And you could also create nodes that are these contact forms. I've done it. I'm going to go back into here. Sorry. By the way, it's under structure, YAML form. Not that hard to get to. Submissions. Also, all the submissions are tracked in a global way. So this is just a concept I kind of want to introduce people to because I need help figuring it out. This form got submitted in two places, and I'm actually capturing the context of where the form's coming from. So it makes the forms reusable. You know, like I kept having people copy the same form over and over and over again, say, here's a reg an event and I want people to register for it. And they copy the form and put it at the bottom of that registration event. The idea here is you could take the same form and put it on multiple events and it will track that information. It captures the context down to what entity you're, you're submitting the form from and even query string parameters. There's, an, there's actually the ability to pre-populate the form from query string parameters. It's done in a secure way where you have to turn it on. If you check a box, then in the query string parameters of URL, you can set any value. Um, that is a pretty thorough demo. This thing, you can guys can hop on to simply test me and go through it. Um, and I'm going to move forward. Conclusions. So, I mean, YAML, just to back up to the point of like, YAML's great. It's simple to understand and to learn. It's everywhere in Drupal 8. It can be used to solve some difficult problems. And I guess, you know, I brought in this module that asks the question, does this solve a difficult problem for Drupal 8? Um, what do you think? Questions? Yeah. Thank you, Jake. Any questions? Okay. Under 10 minutes? No, but that's okay. <laughs> any any questions over here? Great. Okay, so I know nothing about D8. From what I understand from your talk, web form still is not available. And is it, I mean, so it's, is this going to be available? Are you, uh, is anybody considering this for, for forms in D8 in general? The, so the, the status of this module, I started it just, the part three is the fact that there's a lot of background here. I've done, this is live, this, not this module, this concept is live on mskcc.org. It's handling about 100 forms and they're being built in YAML and we've got good performance out of it. Um, I put the module on D.O, I'm getting some feedback, but it's in un, an unstable, in the sense of I'm still sorting out the APIs, but I'm hoping to have an alpha release in the next 
week or so. And I, I want to push it forward. I have the time and resources to do it. Um, Web Forms is just in a very difficult state because it's a very complex module. There's a lot of politics about porting that. It's, it's, it is. I mean, I, it is a solution that we had to use to replace Web Forms. Hey, uh, whoa, that was amazing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like whatever thing you wrote that converts the YAML to a form array that needs to be like ready to go for so many reasons and I would even try to get that in 8.2 or 8.3. It just seems like that tiny thing would make such a big difference in building these, these form arrays. So I don't know. Oh, I, I will, like, no, no, just by, by the way, a quick note about YAML. <laughs> What's missing from this demo is converting anything that's around, yeah, anything to into YAML because we had stuff right. with like links, like a list of links. It's amazing, and that and that needs to be like everywhere. That idea, because you're exactly right. YAML's amazing, and it's just you can program with it. Like, why not have a form file in your module, and just say Drupal get form and automatically finds that file, right? As a YAML file instead of a giant array. Some form, so many different forms are tiny. And, and like one trick that just very quickly I did do was form alters in YAML is really easy. <laughs> So instead of like, you just have a bunch of files, you catch the ID and you just alter the forms yeah. and it saves a huge amount of time, especially like exposed filters and stuff. So I guess it's not a not necessarily a question, but maybe some advice to build a tiny little library that does just that part. Mm. And so that we could kind of play with it on a lot of, on different levels. There needs to be a cookbook for Drupal 8 because these are like little, these are just very simple classes. Like there's a lot of these little classes that will just help people where they just need to cut and paste them into their custom code. Taking that and making yeah. that a separate I got a question right here, and then one time for one more. Uh, Jake, I'll buy your uh, Drupal 8 cookbook. But uh, the question I had for you is uh, patient data. So, how would, uh, are you, are they using it for patient data right now, or encrypted data, or? No, but that's exactly. So, this whole abstraction of the handler and being able to turn off submissions—that's how Song Catering turns off the. We, we turn off the storing of submissions and send it to a web service, and that's kind of what inspired me to be like, you have to abstract out how you handle data. So that people who don't, it just makes it, opens up unlimited capabilities. Because also the, the hand, these um, handlers allow you to alter things too. So you could do a payment handler where you just say, I want to add a payment handler and it'll just alter the form and add all the credit card information below it. And it's not going to be stored. You know, you can deal with your own security. I'm going to kind of echo what John said. I think this is a great uh, way to transition for a lot of things because, I mean, Part of the annoyances of Drupal is that you're using some web GUI and you're doing a bunch of stuff and then at the end of the day you still need to get it out into code to version it and all these things, right? So you're fighting to go through a GUI just to get it back out into code anyway. Why do that if you can just have it in code? All the content types and forms and everything like that in D8 now, they do export straight to YAML. So like the fields, the field settings, all that stuff gets exported. It's very different I, than what Jake I, did. I want to just address that one thing because it's really valid. You can export everything. The and by the way, just like the plug here, um, entity form and contact form. If you need to do data analysis and complex stuff, use those systems. This is not like I'm not. This won't build views. You could write a plugin handler to do it, but it's not my goal. But the thing about the exporting fields, because I I dealt with hundreds of fields, each one gets its own file. And it does become hard to manage. And I'm not going to go very deep into code, but I'm just going to show you something. This form, I'm going to show you the kitchen sink. Everything's stored into one file that you can edit and share. And that's kind of been a huge. Oh, oh bummer. Just, just a second. You're killing me. You're killing me. OK. This is the kitchen sink. I'm going to actually go to the contact form and just show you. I spent a lot of energy making sure that this would be all in one file that's extremely readable so you could just share it. Because I personally wanted this. I really couldn't stand like even your handlers and all the permissions are stored in this one file and they're structured and you can tweak them and share them. And I, I made a couple of interesting decisions where these are really shareable. Like I'm not using text formats because I can't tell what text formats on other people's systems. So I just felt like that that pattern I wanted to get away from so that this could be copied and pasted. Um, that's it. Oh, finally a plug. 
use this module, especially the big sites. If you are comfortable manipulating data, you could use it now. Because basically the issue is if I make some change to the API, all you got to do is know what you're doing and write an update hook. Um, this is usable. Um, and I need help seeing it to the end. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jacob.